Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to cover a few uh, invasive plants uh, in my area in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm going to do a series of videos on this. Uh, the spot that I'm covering right here is about 20 feet long, and uh, I'm covering, I think, seven or eight plants uh, in this video. That um, This wall behind me is made up of a uh, white mulberry uh, with a porcelain berry vine trying to kill it uh, to uh, uh, two invasive plants that I'm going to show you uh, in this video. Maybe help you identify them uh, in your space. Uh, some of these things were introduced as ornamentals um, and have ornamental qualities to them and are still sold uh, as ornamentals and probably it doesn't really matter at this point because they are naturalized uh, into our into the wooded spaces. Uh, so probably, probably irrelevant um, at this point whether anybody's selling them. We're probably not going to stop uh, any of this, uh, any of this from, from going forward. Luckily, um, in plant breeding here, we've, we're seeing a lot of attention being paid to uh, things, um, uh, plants that have invasive uh, potential um, being, uh, you know, that being bred um, out of them, where they're, you know, things that are taking away flowering and taking away fruiting, creating sterile cultivars and that kind of thing, so we can prevent a lot of this. But damage done on a lot of these uh, older plants. And so I'm going to, like I say, do a series of videos. Uh, let's get started on these. So I'm just going to go from here to right there, it's maybe uh, 30 feet, and I'll show you, uh, I'm gonna show you like, I think seven uh, super nasty uh, noxious weeds uh, that are right here uh, in my area. This first one's kind of interesting because this is a uh, clarodendron, which people actually use as an ornamental, and it's got these incredibly fragrant uh, white flowers. Uh, bees love this plant. Uh, I can make a completely separate video on all the qualities of uh, this clarodendron as an ornamental plant but uh it can actually let me get around here um hopefully uh i don't know because of the lighting you won't be able to see but they go all the way back into this uh wooded area uh the uh beautiful uh fruit there comes from uh, those, those white flowers uh the bracts turn red like this and then you get that uh you get that fruit in the uh, in the middle that really bright blue fruit the foliage is beautiful it can be tree formed. Like I say, I can make an entire video on how this is a great ornamental plant, uh, but it has definitely escaped uh, cultivation and is, you know, in, in, in wooded spaces. Uh, super fragrant. Um, it's still fragrant. I'm in, in the middle of September here and I still got newer open flowers on it. And, uh, you know, and then the more mature ones, birds will obviously take these and that, that's what's spreading it around. Um, another one, I'm going to go to another one because, you know, people use as an ornamental. Uh, this is sweet autumn clematis. It's just finished, uh, just finished flowering here. So it was bloomed a little bit early this year, but it is all over uh, my neighborhood. It's you know grows up in you know any any wooded space. You'll see it growing along the edges. Again, it's another fragrant one. Got a lot of ornamental qualities. Garden centers probably still selling it today, but it is definitely uh, <laughs> gone absolutely crazy uh, out in the uh, out in the wooded out in the wooded spaces. This one drives. Uh, everyone crazy. This is a porcelain berry. Uh, beautiful, beautiful berries on this vine. But it, uh, again, the birds carry it around. You'll see it growing on fences everywhere. It's a pretty lucky vine because the birds carry it around and then they sit on fences. And, uh, you know, the, the, it germinates with a, with a ready place to, to get going and grab onto and uh, start growing. I'm going to go pan up this uh, uh, pine tree that's in front of me because that's English ivy right there. This whole wooded space right here has been, a lot of it's been taken over by English ivy. It's actually in flower up there. I don't think you'll be able to see that, but um, it is flowering and it's, I don't know how tall that tree is at this point, but it's gotta be at least 40 or 50 feet uh, up that tree, which is pretty typical of English ivy. It's just another one that's just completely and uh, totally out of control. Uh, I think that gives us four in this video, and I have moved, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe six feet uh, so far. Uh, this is uh, mulberry here. Um, this is Morris alba. There is actually is a native uh, mulberry, um, Morris rubra, but uh, Morris alba, I can usually tell because it has shinier, has shinier leaves on it, um, like this one right here. Uh, and um, the back is uh, usually has a kind of a hairy, texture to it. You'll see these will start off with these lobed leaves and they'll have several lobes on them when they're immature and then as the leaves mature uh, they do this. Another one the birds carry around everywhere. Of course the fruit's edible but 
uh, this this weed will come up. I mean, this these mulberries will come up in the sidewalks. I mean, I've seen them coming up in everything. Everything that you would think that you could put down as a defense against this uh, or any other weed, uh, it will come right through it. Um, mature boxwoods with these growing in them. And they can become, you know, pretty substantial trees. This one's kind of funny because it's trying to fight off um, porcelain berry has attacked it. Um, so you got uh, two invasive uh, actually attacking one another right there. Um, if I go, let's see, this is a uh, Chinese privet right here. Uh, Chinese privet's just everywhere. Uh, a lot of the country has a problem with this one, but you can see how tall it is up here. And just another one that's uh, super invasive. The deer uh, actually actually eat these, but they can't eat them fast enough. Um, and coming back down here, um, this was, this one is really, really, really awful. and has a zero. You know, a lot of what uh, the other things I've shown, uh, you know, the, 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 the privet, the mulberry, um, the English ivy that was, you know, growing up the tree up there, and uh, uh, the clerodendron, the sweet autumn clematis. I mean, there's some, there's some value uh, in them that got them to be planted in the first place. I have no idea how this Japanese stilt grass or microstegium <laughs> would have gotten here, but every single wet patch of ground in a wooded space that I go to now in North Carolina from end to end uh, is just absolutely covered in this weed. Uh, this weed is just... I mean, it, this one, this one is truly displacing uh, native plants. It's shading the ground out, and I think preventing preventing native native plants from uh, from germinating. A lot of these other things, as invasive as they are, they're not taking over every square inch of the of the woods where that uh, microstegium is just absolutely covering the ground so densely uh, during the summertime that I don't think other things are going to be able to germinate through it. So the last invasive I'll cover here will be uh, this Chinese wisteria right here. Um, truly a, a, a well-established uh, invasive plant. Uh, obvious why it was brought here. It has the uh, flowers in the spring uh, and early summer that people like. It vines like crazy, um, but it'll outgrow almost anything. It's completely naturalized. It's growing on that fence there. It's eating a Chinese privet here. Uh, and then it has the ability to kind of come up and grow as kind of a shrub or a ground cover uh, for some period of time until it finds something uh, that it can climb on. So really kind of an amazing, amazing invasive quality uh, to this uh, Chinese wisteria. This will be the last one I'll cover in this video. I'm gonna have several of these uh, going around uh, my neighborhood just showing you some of these, uh, these plants that uh, have uh, naturalized uh, in the environment and uh, how, how aggressive they actually are uh, in the, uh, in, you know, even, even in an, even in a, I'm surrounded by houses right now and these things can come up and, uh, take over a space really, really quickly. Uh, that's an Eliagnus right there. I'll be covering that in the next video. Thanks for watching.